Hope in the form of a vaccine. The first phase of Arizona's vaccine rollout begins. Plus, a second potential vaccine under review. What's the difference between the two? We connect the dots. And mysteriously wonderful, what's with these giant hearts sparking joy across Goodyear? 12 at 12 starts right now. 12 minutes, no commercials. We're on TV and on the go on the 12 News app, website, and YouTube. Hello, it's Trisha here. History is being made in Arizona today as health systems around the state begin their first mass vaccination efforts for COVID-19. And it couldn't come at a better time. The latest count by Arizona's Department of Health Services still doubling the numbers we saw at the beginning of November. The latest report from DHS this morning showing there were 5,817 new cases and 147 new deaths. A lot of these big numbers are due to delayed reporting. But there is hope this afternoon as phase one of the vaccine rollout begins. Team 12's Jen Wall was at Honor Health as that first wave went through. Jen? And we're told they're going to be able to vaccinate up to about a thousand people today here at this distribution site with Honor Health. And it's also important to note that these vaccinations for COVID-19 are not available to the general public yet. This is just going to be open to healthcare workers and first responders for this beginning rollout. Now, Honor Health is operating one of five distribution sites with those first vaccinations starting today. They got around 10,000 doses of the coronavirus vaccine to administer to people who've been battling the coronavirus tirelessly on the front line for months. It's a hopeful and historic day for Arizona as virus continues to rage in our state and new and sick patients are admitted to hospitals. We're told the healthcare workers facing the greatest dangers when it comes to COVID-19 will be some of the very first to get vaccinated and medical experts are hopeful as this day arrives. We're really excited to have the vaccine available to our healthcare workers today. They have been working really hard for a long time. They feel like they're in the 22nd mile of a marathon. These vaccinations will be happening in Maricopa and Pima counties. And it's also important to note that even with the vaccinations rolling out, we still need to continue physical distancing and wearing masks. All of the CDC recommendations need to be followed to help slow the spread of COVID-19. Back to you. Jen, thank you. There are a few different spots across the state giving the COVID shot today, including the Arizona State Fairgrounds. Governor Doug Ducey touring that site just yesterday. He and other state leaders are calling this vaccine a modern day medical miracle. At these locations, eligible health care workers are going to be receiving COVID-19 vaccines. And by next week, there's going to be five of these pods set up vaccinating health care workers as well as frontline workers here. The governor says we still have a ways to go and he's encouraging everyone to get vaccinated when it's available to you. The fight against this pandemic is not over. Far from it. I need Arizonans to continue to do their part in slowing the spread of this virus. So far, we're told 13,000 people have already pre-screened. Yesterday, Arizona's top doctor, D director of Arizona Department of Health Services, Dr. Kara Christ, along with nine first responders and healthcare workers, became some of the first people in Arizona to get that first dose of the vaccine. Now, they're all members of phase 1A of the vaccine plan, which includes healthcare workers, along with people in long term care facilities. Meanwhile, the FDA is expected to meet today to discuss. Green lighting another COVID-19 vaccine. Officials say Moderna's COVID vaccine appears to be very promising, reportedly about 95% effective at preventing disease. So what's the difference between the Moderna shot and the Pfizer one? Let's connect the dots. It's looking pretty good for Moderna. Scientists at the Food and Drug Administration have already endorsed the company's COVID-19 vaccine. Now, the advisory committee of outside experts will take a closer look at the data and decide whether to recommend it. Then, the FDA will announce if they will grant emergency use authorization. So how is Moderna's vaccine different from Pfizer's? Both appear overwhelmingly effective. Pfizer's is 95% effective against symptomatic COVID-19, while Moderna's was 94.1% effective. 
Even if you do manage to get sick after getting the vaccine, both appear to prevent severe illness. Moderna does have one key difference from Pfizer. Its vaccine doesn't have to be kept quite so cold. Pfizer's has to be kept at minus 94 degrees Fahrenheit. Moderna's needs to be kept at minus 4 degrees for long-term storage, but can be kept at around 40 degrees for 30 days. That would mean Moderna's vaccine would be easier to transport. All right, thank you. A monster storm has dumped more snow in parts of the Northeast than they got all of last winter. Look at this. Those living in and around New York City, Philadelphia and Boston waking up to between 6 to 12 inches of snow this morning. Wow, and more snow is on the way. Let's check in with Crystal for more on that nor'easter and what we can expect here in our neck of the woods. Crystal. That nor'easter really is the water cooler topic across the country today. We're even getting in weather watcher photos from New York. Yeah, this one coming in from Bridget, where her little guy couldn't wait to get a taste of that fresh powder in Westchester County here. Some totals approached a foot. And of course, this snowstorm continues to send those flakes flying throughout the rest of today before it makes its complete departure later on tonight. Now, if you would like to dig into something other than snow, perhaps get your cotton candy or turkey leg fix, the Ho Ho Holiday drive through Fair Food is going on at the fairgrounds from 4 to 10. It's going to be a cloudy affair. And temperatures, they're tumbling down into the 50s at 8 o'clock, so you'll definitely want to be cranking your heater in the car by then, especially with those winds out of the east 5 to 10 miles an hour. Those clouds might even toss out a few stray snow showers up north. It could be very spotty across the northern tier starting this afternoon into the evening. We might even be getting in on some last minute snow showers in those AM hours tomorrow before we kick this thing out to the east and we brighten up our skies. Before that happens, winds are going to be very strong, gusting out of the southwest in our mountains, jumping up between 40 and 50 miles an hour. Too bad we couldn't get in on more rain and snow. In fact, last week's storm system really didn't do much to dig us out of this drought. We only were able to chip away a little bit here in the northeast and in the valley, knocking us out of that exceptional zone, but only 4% of Arizona was taken out of the worst of that drought level. Our dry days are going to continue into the weekend. By tomorrow, we'll lose the clouds and the winds. Temperatures take a bit of a hit, but then they'll bounce back and warm up for the weekend. We'll all be all right as long as we uh, chow down on some of those chocolate chip cookies at the fair. Well, hashtag most clicked. Here are some of the stories piquing everyone's interest right now. Now, Congress appears to be on the verge of a new coronavirus relief deal that could send another stimulus check your way. Leaders hinted checks would be about $600. The $900 billion package is expected to include enhanced federal jobless benefits as well as small business funding. The Paradise Valley School District emailed parents yesterday to tell classes for the start of the next semester are going to remain online for now. No hybrid learning. The district's acting superintendent says the school is continuing to look at options for the spring and summer and hopes to have students return as soon as it's deemed safe. The annual Pats Run is going virtual this year. The Pat Tillman Foundation announcing the annual run will not take place in Tempe unfortunately. Instead, though, they're encouraging the public to run the normal 4.2 miles individually on April 24th. You can register for the upcoming race on the Pat Tillman Foundation website. An art project is creating some buzz. What's with those giant hearts popping up across Goodyear? Well, we sent Team 12's Vanessa Ramirez to check it out. If you've been in the West Valley, you've probably seen one of these. They're hard to miss giant heart sculptures appearing across Goodyear. But where did they come from and why? So the Heart of Goodyear project is an installation that the city has installed to celebrate the 75th anniversary for the city of Goodyear. Goodyear was formed November 19, 1946. These hearts are part of the 2021 celebration that will stay in the community for years to come. They landed on a heart because all we all need a little love right now and we all love our city, um, our residents love our city and we thought this was a perfect way to celebrate. There are 10 hearts in total, spread out at different locations across Goodyear. Each one painted by a different artist or group of artists 
and represent specific decades. The hearts begin with 1940s, go all the way through today, and then we also have one art heart to celebrate our future. Goodyear father and daughter duo, Adam and Addie, were selected to paint the 1960s heart. And I told Addie about the Blue Angels, and she just thought it was really cool, so we looked into it a little bit more. And the, I have a dream speech, you know, obviously the moon landing, and we just were both really drawn to the good of the 60s. Just a lot of positive vibes were coming out of it for us. These hearts may have started out as a way to celebrate an anniversary, but they've also brought the community together during a time where we could all use a little healing. And there's elements on this piece that super resonate with people. Uh, we did not expect it, but we have a tribute to Vietnam on the backside, and we've had several Vietnam vets uh, come to us and just, it was one guy almost in tears. It was so amazing. And Goodyear, Vanessa Ramirez, 12 News. Wow, so beautiful. We definitely have to go check those out. The finished peach pieces, that is, are expected to be officially unveiled in January, but some artists are still working on their hearts, so maybe you'll even see them in action. Uh, yeah, head out there to Goodyear. All you've got to do is stop by one of those locations on this map to see all of the magic unfolding. Well, all this week, we're sending the love to you with the help of our sponsors, and you can win all sorts of great prizes. Just go to 12news.com slash contest. There you can find all the information to enter. Good luck. And that's your 12 at 12, the facts on everything you need to know in just 12 minutes. No commercials. We're always on anywhere, anytime on 12news.com, the 12 News app, and our socials as well. We'll see you again soon.